In this video, what we're going to do is figure out the total surface area of a cone when the slant height is given, and then we're going to figure out the surface area of a cone when the slant height is not given. And what we're going to do is use the formula pi r l plus pi r to the second power. Now this equation is really comprised of two main parts. This part right here will give us the lateral area of the cone, which is the area of the side of the cone. And this part of our equation will give us the area of the circular surface. Now in our equation, we really just have to figure out to start with what is the value of r, which is the radius, and the value of l, which is our slant height. Well, the value of r, or our radius, is going to be 6 centimeters, and the slant height of our cone is 10 centimeters. Now this length right here is the height of our cone, but notice we do not use this in our formula. And that is because the height is not on the surface of the cone. So we really just use this dimension right here, which is our slant height. So what we're going to do is substitute the variable r with 6. And we are going to substitute the slant height with 10. So if we were to multiply these three values together, that would give us the lateral area of our cone. And then we have to substitute 6 in for the radius on this set of our equation. And solving pi times 6 to the second power will give us the area of the circular surface. All right. Now that we have substituted the correct values in for the radius and the slant height, what we're going to do is solve this equation in terms of pi to start with. So we're going to start with 6 times 10, which is 60. So this part of our equation, we're going to rewrite as 60 multiplied by pi. And on this side of our equation, we have to take 6 to the second power, which is 36. So we're going to rewrite that as 36 multiplied by pi. Now, at this step in our equation, we have two terms. We have 60 pi and 36 pi. So what we're going to do is combine like terms. And 60 pi and 36 pi would be a total of 96 pi. Now, the reason I like solving in terms of pi first is because, let's say we substituted pi with 3.14 at the beginning we would have two decimal values on either side of this plus sign that we'd have to contend with. So at this point, all we have to do is use 3.14 one time, which cuts down on the chance of making a calculation error. All right, so now what we can do is we can take 3.14 and multiply that by 96 to see what our total surface area is going to be of this cone. Now notice that 96 is kind of close to 100, so if I were to estimate, we're going to have an answer that is about 3 times 100, or 300. But let's see what our precise answer is going to be. So we have 6 times 4, which is 24. And we have an 8 right here. And then we have 18. All right. And then on the second row, we have 36. And then we have 12 and 28. Now we have to add those digits together, which is 4, 14, 11, and 10, and 3. And then our decimal is going to go right here. So we would say that the surface area of this cone right here is approximately equal to 301 and 44 hundredths square centimeters. Now remember, when multiplying anything by 3.14, that is an approximation for pi. So anything multiplied by an approximation will result in an approximate value. So that's why I said the surface area is approximately equal to 301 and 44 hundredths square centimeters. Okay, let's do an example when the slant height is not given. All right, now notice in this problem, they do not give us what the slant height of this cone is. So what we have to do is use the radius of our circle and the height of our cone to determine what the slant height is using the Pythagorean theorem. Now notice that the radius of our circle along with the height of our cone form a right triangle 
with the slant height of the cone. And because the radius and the height and the slant height form a right triangle, we can take advantage of the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the slant height actually is. Now, the two lengths that form the right angle of your right triangle are considered the legs of your right triangle. And what you want to do with those two values is square them and add those two squares together. And that is going to be equal to c squared, which is the hypotenuse or the longest side of your right triangle, which is shown right here. So 9 squared is 81, 12 squared is 144, and that is going to be equal to whatever the value of c is to the second power. And if we add these two values together, that would give us 225. Now to figure out what c is, we have to take the square root of 225, which is equal to 15. So now we know that the slant height of our cone is equal to 15 centimeters. So now we have all the information required to find the total surface area of this cone. Okay, so what we're going to do first is take the radius of our circle and multiply it by the slant height. So let's take 9 times 15, and that gives us 135 and we have to multiply that by pi. And that's going to give us the lateral area of our cone. And now we have to take the radius of our circle, which is nine, and square it. Nine squared is 81, so we can just write 81 times pi. So 81 pi is the area of our circular surface. All right, next we have to combine like terms by adding 135 pi and 81 pi, which is a total of 216 pi. Okay, now we can take 216 and multiply that by 3.14. All right, first let's do 4 times 216, which would be 864. And the next digit is a 1, and 1 times 216 is 216. And then we have to do 3 times. 216. Well, I know 3 times 16 is 48, and 3 times 200 is 600, so that would be a total of 648. All right, now we can just add these digits together and put our decimal where it goes. So this column is 4, this column is 12, this column here is 18, this column here is 7. And of course, the first column is just 6. And our decimal point goes right here in this position. So the surface area of this cone is approximately equal to 678 and 2400 square centimeters. So there you have it. We calculated the surface area of a cone when the slant height was given, as well as an example when the slant height was not given. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.